Hi everyone, welcome to Let's Draw number 10. Uh, I am Robin Holstein, welcome. Uh, and if you can like, share, and su subscribe to my channel, that'd be great. I appreciate it. And uh, be sure to check out robinholstein.org uh, for any extra merchandise and information uh, that I have attached to these videos. Uh, hopefully the audio this time around is gonna be better. I am trying not to mumble my way through it. Uh, uh, last recording I sometimes I record actually most of the time no most of the time I record these in the morning and uh, my wife uh, unfortunately we live in a studio apartment which means no walls and the only thing separating my stupid talking head from my wife uh, who's sleeping right now is a uh, curtain <laughs> so it's not very soundproof but um I just told I just told her I, I apologize for how loud I'm gonna get, uh, but honestly, it's I have to make sure this recording uh, is loud and clear. So hopefully, uh, um, this is better. Uh, I have several subjects to talk about for today. Uh, I try to I could, of course I try to switch these up. Um, I think just to ease into it, I'm gonna start talking about a coffee hack that I learned. Uh, I love lattes, and a latte is a concentrated espresso shot um, or two of coffee uh, with a lot, a, lo a lot of steamed milk uh, with foam. And so I wanted the steamed milk and foam part, and I was I re really wanted it because. Uh, Lattes are expensive, <laughs> and I thought it'd be cool. Like it's like, how do you get that without uh, having to like have the whole steaming operation that you see uh, at coffee shops and baristas like working at? Uh, so what I found is that um, you can get whole milk, like if you can get, just get the regular milks, like from fat-free milk all the way up to whole milk. Uh, quality and put that into a jar and shake the jar uh, thankfully at work um, there's a group of people who have mason jars and they put butter in their coffee that's a little much for me but they like to put butter in their coffee and they shake it that way whatever uh, to each their own and but they have the jar thankfully and so yeah you put the milk in the jar shake the jar um, uh, pretty vigorously for about like a minute 30 seconds to a minute until you double double the size of like the content um like whatever milk amount you put in there it should be double the size uh now uh, and it's gonna be uh, mostly foam at this point uh yeah once you get that uh take off any metal lids if it does have a metal lid uh, pop it in a microwave for 20 seconds and it solidifies the foam a little bit better uh, from there um, uh, I wish I had <laughs> espresso shots or uh, my coffee press that I have at home um, but we have decent drip coffee at work um, we, uh, we get peats so can't complain it's actually super strong so it works and yeah just dump off the, you know, just put that uh, nice warm cream into the coffee and scoop out as much foam as you want. It's a pretty uh, easy hack. Um, I try to find like nice ways to make my coffee just because I don't like buying it. <laughs> it's one of those things that it's amazing how much they charge. It's not that much of a, um, I guess, time time and money commit just to do this stuff on your own do not use half and half I try I love half and half uh, just because uh, I don't so I don't put sugar in my coffee um, I have to rely on the, the milk um, quality and I usually prefer half and half because uh, the higher fat content and the higher um, natural sugars that are in it um, helps sweeten my coffee better and but I think because of the fat content in it, I think because of the fat content 
uh, in it, there is... I think that's a preventative from getting nice like foam bubbles to form, which I think is what when is when uh, air is like introduced into the proteins uh, from shaking. So that's why you have to stick with uh, um, regular milks. So yeah, that's my coffee hack uh, that I discovered. I was pretty happy with that. You're gonna start seeing me work on my let's draws. Uh, I don't have, my time is limited, so I'm gonna have to use these let straws to start exploring uh, uh, the look, um, also some character development. It's, it's just gonna be paired with uh, what I'm writing for comics. Nothing set in stone right now, I'm not saying what I'm working on. Um, you can kinda just get an idea from the images. Uh, <clears throat> I can already tell you right now, like, uh, the image that I make at the end of this is okay, but it made me realize, like, um, it's not the style I want to do. Um, I kind of, so I have to, like, explore that better, and ideally it's, like, it's more of a, uh, I need to focus more on the design of things, if that makes sense. I, uh, I need to, well, so I, I mean... This is just a scene. These are characters I just make up. I'm not gonna, they're just background characters. No, I'm not using any of them um, uh, in the final. And I think because of that, you know, I didn't, haven't, didn't put any too much thought into the design. So hopefully I get to start uh, coming up with characters. Um, I have some characters that I need to start figuring out. Uh, how they would look in the world, and then um, I will say I need to simplify them for sure. Uh, I need to come up with a style that is uh, both intriguing and um, simplified to a point that I can like quickly uh, get a page done. And this is going to have to. This is. For me, it's, I have to move away from rendering. Uh, I love rendering, I love texture, but I have to move away from that and start, uh, like I said, simplifying and getting um, more flats, like more flat blacks uh, into the image. Yeah, creating a style that's simplified. Um, like artists I'm gonna be looking at, that I admire. If you look at like a, a Mike Mignola page, um, it's amazing. He... It's simplified, but the information that he gives is so intriguing, and the, the design of the page just makes it feel like... How, it, it's... So, the page as a whole, as, like, it's, it's... When viewing a comic, it's like, it's not... Each panel is not a standalone. Um, really, you're designing, like, when, when a reader is going to flip through a comic page, they absorb, um, even though they're not, like, even though you may be reading from panel to panel, you still are in peripheral, like, um, or initially when you get to the page, you absorb the entire page. Um, and you get all the information there. And, yeah, it become and so it's really, it's like, uh, how he designed the whole of the page, even though in, in the individual, uh, some of his panels get super abstract or like they're super simplified, but as a whole, it creates such a beautiful story. Um, damn that man. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, there are others. So it's, and other, uh, uh, for black and white composition, simplifying and stuff like that, like Jaime Hernandez, um, spelled J-A-I-M-E, I'm gonna say. Um, but yeah, Jaime Hernandez, um, he's a great person to look at for um, black and white compositions because he also like simplifies and flattens out his blacks. Also, both these guys, uh, they don't do perspective a lot. I get caught in perspective, like I understand it, so, but sometimes, uh, it, uh, I don't 
don't know what, what happens. It it feels kind of more like a movie still when they how they flatten it out. If that makes sense, they're always and it kind of focuses on the character. I think that's what it is. If they are, for them, they want to focus on character. Um, and the set is kind of it, the set is like just it's there for the character. Uh, right. Sometimes I can go reverse. Uh, I enjoy drawing backgrounds. And but really, what needs to happen? I need to reverse that and really start focusing on character. Um, yeah, if you see my Black Canary and uh, Zatanna and um, my Batgirl, um, I made sure I took time with those uh, and made sure that they look good um, in like a nice simplified black and white style. And that's what I'm gonna need to uh, start figuring out. Um, I think that's after, I mean, those characters are nicely designed already. So all I had to do was, um, at least I didn't have to come up with the character design. So that made, that made my life easier. It's like, I just, <laughs> I just have to take those characters and plop them into like an interesting scene. Uh, so the hard part now is uh, because I'm creating everything from scratch um, is creating a interesting character look. Um, I will say like definitely, uh, I saw, uh, saw some images recently that a friend of mine um, I follow on Pinterest and he like some of the images he likes and I was looking at a work of uh, an American artist but he's like influenced by a lot of Japanese comics I'm I was similar um, and and am similar uh, in a way I think I've gone uh, back into Western comics enough that now I want to bring it back um, to some of the, uh, I guess some of the look and technique uh, that Japanese artists use uh, with their characters um, that I like. So yeah, uh, that's where I'm at with comics. You're gonna start seeing uh, what, uh, you're gonna start seeing the world and the characters um, that I want to write. Uh, it, it's going to be okay at first, and then I'm hoping over time as I refine uh, and start getting a better idea of what I'm doing. Sorry for the beeping. Uh, I hate living on a busy street. I mean, I'm used to it, like sleeping and um, stuff like that, but man it makes recording a nightmare like you'll see a lot of my videos where like the light like like the the credit card video uh the light how it's flickering like on me like um i had a friend of mine it's like you're he thought it was like a video encoding like weird thing that i did um and no it's just uh the windows are open um lights coming through and it just so happens, like, I live on a busy, right next to a busy street, so it's all those cars that are passing by, and the lights reflecting off their windows and onto me, and I didn't realize it until I was done re with recording. And I'm like, I, I have a finite amount of time. I can't, you know, it's, it's kind of like a one-take uh, type deal, and just move on, and writing's interesting right now. Like, uh, I, it's kind of, it's actually kind of fun researching. Um, I'm creating something out of nothing. Uh, I create a subject. So I created the subject, which is like a one sentence uh, idea of like introducing character um, setting and conflict. I think that's what it is, yeah. Um, it's the setup. Um, it's not resolution. Uh, <clears throat> so now that I have that one sentence, it's I'm now having to uh, research and figure out the world more so I can have more information. Um, like I'm figuring out the details and the characters uh, that occupy the world. Uh, it's, it's interesting figuring out the characters because uh, those are more, I would say like uh, what, uh, 
I, I'm, I keep asking, like, to get through the, this writing, I keep uh, uh, asking myself questions, because um, I don't, and I realize that's the best way to, at this point, like, write. It's like, um, oh, there's this person, okay, why is that person there? Uh, who's that? It's like, who's the person? How do they get there? It's like, it's... I just go through like a list of like questions, um, which usually spawn more questions and I just have to answer my questions in order to, uh, you know, it's it, like, that's, it's, I'm getting the details. It's, it's all like, uh, it's all, it, it doesn't, it's not, it's all like kind of like a, it's incoherent, like, a, um, doesn't make sense altogether in a way. Um, it's just having like a spider web of details right now uh, and that I'll eventually, um, when it comes to, I guess, the next stage, which is an outline, I think. It might be the outline or it might be uh, the setup, like creating the beginning of the story um, <clears throat> up to the inciting incident. Uh, and the, in, the inciting in incident Sometimes some words are just hard. Uh, the inciting incident uh, is, um, it's a conflict or like an event um, that propels the story forward. So usually in movies, like you get a setup for the world and then something happens to the character that forces them to deal with like a new situation um, like, or uh, to go off on a journey and that's like the rest of the movie until there's another inciting incident that um, resolves I guess it's the usually the climax and like resolves the conflict and then um, you enter the end of the um, the movie where it starts winding down um, so yeah that's where I'm at Let's see. 21 minutes recording Okay. Uh, I think I, I think I, I think I could spend the rest of this time talking about um, negotiating salaries. Yay! Uh, that's what I had to deal with yesterday. Um, and yeah, there was no negotiating really on my part. There was uh, uh, there was a number I had in my head. Um, oh yeah, so. Uh, where I work, I was getting leveled up uh, from a senior 2D animator um, to a senior 3D animator because um, I shifted from our 2D games of Family Guy um, and some other and Spellstorm, which doesn't exist anymore, except for on an old blog. I have some animations, but uh, shifted over. Um, now to like working I've been working on the Marvel Avengers Academy and uh, now I'm trained up for like I'm, I'm more comfortable in 3D now uh, it's been interesting like a journey trying like it's because I it, so for one understanding self-worth uh, have it like they, they were the company that hired me uh, when I moved from Atlanta um, to here, like to, um, San Francisco. And so, yeah, they were the, uh, they were the company I came into and I haven't left yet. Uh, it's been four years. Um, that is actually kind of a rarity, uh, in the industry. I, I feel like a lot of artists, uh, there's a high turnover rate, either get burned out or, um, situation is like toxic or usually a lot of times uh, the company that they're at um, mismanages uh, like the game or the money or whatever and whatever they have to lay off people something like that uh, so it you know I'm actually I, I'm you know I've been fine like I I'm, I I don't, 
have the need to move on usually. Uh, like I've been there for four years. Like I, I went in there, you know, as an animator, uh, and then I've been I'm moving up through the ranks, just now like out of like uh, getting the skills and seniority. Uh, I have like legacy knowledge of how um, it's like, yes, we can animate the, uh, yes, we like um, animators animate um, the character or whatever that needs to go into the game. Uh, but the second half of it is like troubleshooting and understanding um, and coordinating with content managers and engineers uh, on how uh, to get the animation into the game because a lot of times it doesn't go so smoothly into the game and something breaks and uh, I have to I have to go look at the file uh, and see what needs to be tweaked and fixed and then send it back to them and yeah so it's like that's more the legacy knowledge I have like uh, knowing like what how things fit into the game. But yeah, um, so self-worth, uh, and really the only no way to know self-worth, I realize, is by uh, moving on, really, um, or like getting an offer from another company. Uh, it's just a realization I had. And so supposedly I should be making more money. Um, it's a good chunk. But like, it's not like a, a significant like pay gap, as opposed to like pay gaps you get between lawyers and doctors. I, I was talking to the lawyer uh, that lives in the building, and lives in the building where I'm at, and he was. There was like sometimes like between like mid firm lawyers to like large firm lawyers. There's like a sixty grand um, gap that can happen and um so I guess it puts things in perspective I'm like well I definitely don't have to deal with that um usually it's just, it's in smaller increments for sure uh if there is a gap um but I will say like so negotiating salary a lot of creators avoid the conflict for sure and we don't it's something that's not natural uh it's, it's the business side of things that um, they never taught us in school. Um, so what would I say to you all when negotiating salaries? Uh, for one, don't get angry. Um, it is an emotional experience for sure. Uh, it is, you are putting yourself into a, a conflicting situation um, which, like I said, most creators, um, it is, we naturally do not do this. Uh, uh, it's, and yeah, it, it just, it just feels alien for sure. Um, to a point where, uh, we avoid, uh, the people that we need to talk to, um, for this information, uh, and I've seen uh, other artists, they just would prefer to stew and be angry than talk uh, to the people um, that they need to talk to for negotiating salaries. I mean, those people are human and uh, it's better to go ahead and just talk to them and they can, the better ones, excuse me, the better ones for sure can explain what's going on. Um, at the company, but then you kind of, like sometimes I put it, I have to put it through the filter of like, am I being lied to? I don't know. I don't see, the company is not transparent. Um, so you just have to hope that they're, the person that is handling this stuff is uh, <laughs> somewhat truthful. And, <clears throat> which I'm starting to realize, I think um, they are, I mean, like they are, I think they are, uh, saying some uh, truthful things like as I talk to other people at the company. So, especially for the, per <laughs> the person that we have to negotiate for our salaries at the company, um, they are intimidating, shoot straight from the hip and they'll give the information straight and they'll, but they'll just, 
they just do it in a manner that it's not they don't ease into anything they just are straight on um that it almost feels like they're challenging the speed like 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 if i was talking to them like they like uh i just find it like challenging and i i told them this i said it's like you're just intimidating i mean i i've been at the company for four years i've had to talk to them a couple times and um so and we actually do um so that's the biggest thing it's like it's like i i, I know them and uh we have a back and forth uh i will say like after talking to them like more and more like they just thank me for talking to them because none of the artists talk to them i i get the information that's the important thing i get the information and that's so like don't get angry and make sure you get as much information as possible going in. I will say I prefer talking to this person as opposed to the last person um, when I had to negotiate my salary going from animator to senior animator. The, the bump I got from that was insulting. Yeah, it was like a cost of living. Like I was leveling up and they were giving me a 3% cost of living bump in my, my salary. I fought for the ten percent, but with that person, that person was the person that would like be all nice and smiley and bubbly until you actually like needed something. It like they would just smile at your face while they give you a, a bad deal. So I prefer the person handling definitely the salaries these days, uh, for sure. Um, I think it's just because. Uh, they're just straightforward with information. Um, and like I said, like I can only play myself uh, if I I talk about this with them and they understand. Yeah, like uh, I, I just told them I'm coming from a place of ignorance. Um, I realize this and uh, the only way for me to really understand my self-worth is to um, apply to another company and see how much they are willing to pay for me and see if uh, where I work now wants to counter offer, but that just whole like, I wonder if that that I, I would think that just opens up a, like a, a new can of like worms. Maybe not. May I think I think maybe that that's just like if like that would if that happened to me that maybe that's just me getting my own head. Um, <clears throat> I would think it'd be awkward. They know it's like it's like you try you know it's like doing like a power move kind of get like a higher um, raise or a higher salary pay negotiating salaries I really it's like yeah just it's it's all on you um, and try to talk to the people try not to get angry uh, ask questions and also ask if you have good friends um, ask how much they're making uh, companies say that uh, you can't do that why that's just something they like to keep. That's that's a trick in their back pocket. It benefits the company uh, for others not to talk about their salary, even though it's not illegal. Most people think it's illegal. It's not illegal. Uh, you can talk about your salary <laughs> with whoever you want. You can't really do a damn thing about it. Um, unless you are really hostile about it, and then they're like, and then you get laid off. Uh, then they'll, they're doing something about it. Negotiating salaries. So that wraps up Let's Draw number 10. Uh, made it, like I said, to the double digits. That's exciting. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe uh, to the channel. And sign up for my newsletter uh, over at robinholstein.org. With that newsletter, you'll get a unique uh, image of art. Uh, I'll send this little newsletter out once a month, um, and you'll get like a unique um, image of art that I won't share anywhere else. Uh, please check out Robin Holstein uh, on Patreon. Uh, your support is super, super, I'm like grateful uh, for any support uh, you give there. That just helps a lot. As one of the perks, uh, you get your name at the end of this video um, for uh, being a dollar donator a month. And uh, also at robinholstein.org, uh, check out any of my, my merchandise I have. I got books, um, uh, some original art, so please check that out. I uh, hopefully, I, I think that covers mostly everything. Uh, you all have a great day. Uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, 
talk to you next time. Bye.